Hello, I'm Jim Roger, and you're watching The Cutting Edge. Thanks for tuning in. Tonight's show is all about an unsuspecting visitor that's approaching not only our planet, but our solar system. Tonight's show is all about planet Earth being blindsided as planet X passes by in 2003, question mark. And with us tonight to discuss this is Mark Hazelwood. He's a researcher and an author and a lecturer on this subject. And Mark, I'd like to thank you for appearing here tonight. It is our, uh, our privilege, believe me, to have you here tonight. Thanks for coming. It's an honor for me to be here. I really appreciate it. I have a lot of fun doing this. Okay, well, believe me, it, it is our privilege. Uh, could you give the audience a thumbnail sketch of um, uh, your background, how you get started in this field, and uh, what interested you to take this direction? Well, I really feel I was spiritually guided to do this from youth. I was the first exposed to earth change prophecy as a child, Edgar Cayce. And for whatever reason, that sparked an interest over a couple decades. And I perhaps discovered over a hundred different intuitives from different places, different times. It all coincided for about a certain timetable and a certain okay. event that should come up. And along the way, I didn't really understand how that would happen, but uh, my interest was there. And then uh, mm -hmm. toward the end, things came together. I kind of turned away from prophecy and discovered the science behind uh, uh, Planet X type objects, and specifically one called, uh, well, some of the ancients called it Nibiru, the planet of passing. Mm -hmm. It's got a regular orbit of 3,600 years, and uh, it's inbound currently. Very good, very interesting. How close? time-wise, in a time frame, do you think that uh, this planet of passing, or planet X, or Nibiru, mm -hmm. is? Well, you know, I cannot say for sure. I thought I used to be able to. But you see, I believe it's close enough now where it's in the heliosphere and it's broken into its cometary stage. Mm -hmm. And with the tail, uh, it has tail drag. And any one of these large planet X type objects mm -hmm. with tail drag uh, do not follow regular celestial mechanics. In other words, they'll mm -hmm. act like what the ancients used to call as uh, the lawless ones or cosmic serpents. Mm -hmm. So the, the head might surge forward, pause, the tail will catch up. So how to determine, I don't know. I know it's currently inbound. Whether it's a few months or a few short years, I can't say, but that's what I suspect at this time. So basically, we're expecting something that's not following uh, conventional laws of uh, physics or celestial mechanics? Is that, that is true at this time. Any large planet X type object that breaks into a comet will, uh, okay. will not follow normal celestial mechanics. That doesn't mean it's going to go all over the place. It's still inbound. It's just trying to come up with a timetable is difficult mm -hmm. at best. I see. So. What really is Planet X? Is it a meteor, a comet, an asteroid? What is it most like? Well, it is <coughs> large enough to be a planet, and it is a planet. At the same time, when it in, enters in a heliosphere of, uh, of a sun, which it is now, uh, it uh, develops a tail. And so at that, at that point, you can call it a large comet. But uh, you could also call it a cross between a celestial mm -hmm. star and a planet. So uh, mm -hmm. it might be called a brown dwarf. Uh, the average solar system has a dwarf in it. And the average solar system has uh, two suns. So we're very average. We have a second sun, very few are aware of, that's dark. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find this out if you were to go to the library, ask for the new illustrated science and invention encyclopedia between 1987 and 89. Go to volume 30, look under space probes, you'll see a diagram of what pioneers 10 and 11 found, which is our dark star, our twin sun, which is uh, no hazard to us at all. And then the 10th planet, which is another mm -hmm. way to say planet X or Roman numeral number 10. Okay. Very good. Interesting. So you, you say a, a dark star, a twin sun. So in other words, are we living in a, a binary uh, star Correct. system here on We're Earth? We're in a binary system. Very few are aware of this. Uh, the information will slip out like in publications like I identified, uh, although very few people talk about it. It's almost, it's sort of suppressed information because it sets the stage too well for uh, this uh, orbit of Planet X, which is uh, supposedly goes back and forth between the two suns. 
and mm -hmm. takes approximately 3,600 years, like I said. Interesting. And this comes from uh, a Sumerian uh, cuneiform tablets, their records, is that it? That, uh, the Sumerian mm -hmm. tablets do discuss the, uh, mm -hmm. the orbital time of Planet X, which mm -hmm. they identify as 3,600. It may be closer to 3,700 years. Mm -hmm. uh, they also named this planet as the 12th planet because they uh, also included the sun and our moon as planets. So it can be called the 10th, the 12th, Nibiru. I have actually mm -hmm. discovered 50 different names for this planet. I put 35 in my text, mainly from ancient historical sources who had great respect for it. I mean, some of these uh, old mm -hmm. names would be uh, akin to uh, uh, godlike uh, names. Uh, Mm -hmm. Celestial Lord Shiva, a Comet of Doom, the Destroyer. I mean, they're, they're telling na <laughs> nemesis. They're telling names. They 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 really they Not really good names. <laughs> yeah, they understood the significance <laughs> of when this thing comes, and and, that, and consequently the names reflect that. <laughs> okay, so so we're talking about something with a a thirty six or thirty seven hundred year orbital path, right? And uh, so then are there archaeological records that would support periodic destruction within those time frames, 36, 37 hundred years? Absolutely, yes. In fact, I have a section in my text that goes into that. I could have filled my whole book with it, but uh, I decided, you know, I, I can't just do that. It's not what this is about. So mm -hmm. uh, in that section, I go back 14 passages uh, as far as mm -hmm. records go. But the most telling evidence is not carbon dating. It is the evidence for the very last passage between 1600 to 1700 BC. And that is mm -hmm. from tree rings mm -hmm. uh, around the entire globe. So it shows it was a worldwide event, a worldwide pollution event that lasted for de decades. In other words, between 1600 to 1700 BC, mm -hmm. Uh, tree rings from that time were severely narrowed and not just in, like I said, not just in one area of the world, the mm -hmm. entire world. And a mega pollution event like that for decades would not happen unless there was something significant that happened to this planet, uh, like a passing celestial body or planet X type object, which is what this is. Oh, okay, very interesting. Um, so there, there does seem to be uh, periods of past catastrophic destruction. One thing as you were speaking that entered my mind was the uh, frozen uh, mammoths in Siberia that were suddenly frozen. Some of these animals were frozen so quickly they still had fresh vegetation in their mouths and stomachs. And so whatever overtook them was fast and it was catastrophic and it was real. Hard science agrees with it. So. I suppose that really supports what well, you're talking about. Yes, yeah, so in fact, uh, <clears throat> my s research is complemented by a man by the name of James McKenney, and he's got the credentials to back mm -hmm. him up and has been studying the subject for some 30 years. He has a book along similar lines called Planet X Comets and Earth Changes. Mm -hmm. And he brings up that uh, when a Planet X type object like this passes, and there's more than one, the Nibiru is just our regular half brother to this mm -hmm. solar system. Uh, a rather large electromagnetic wave hits the surface if it passes within a certain million miles away, a number of million miles away, and that could cause the surface to move similar to the sea. In other words, a tidal wave could go through the crust of the Earth and move it over the core, which would uh, suddenly put uh, the North and South Pole on different uh, places on the crust, and that would take uh, you know, a tropical uh, mm -hmm. environment and suddenly throw it into sure. a, a polar or, or a, mm -hmm. a very cold environment that would suddenly flash freeze a mammoth mm -hmm. or several different animal, animals mm -hmm. just like it. And uh, yeah. you'd, you'd have these records that, uh, that show this and they are there. Not a good vacation spot. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, evidence of uh, past catastrophic events within our own local solar system. Uh, is there any of that uh, that could be attributed to this? Well, the, yes. Uh, in fact, Mars uh, has, has records on its surface that uh, pretend of uh, 
plasmatic exchange that could happen. In mm -hmm. other words, he was be, these would be large lightning bolts that would happen through mm -hmm. space uh, between mm -hmm. any large Planet X type object and another, another body. In fact, the Grand Canyon may have not been formed by mm -hmm. water. It may have been uh, vaporized by one of these large plasmatic exchanges. In fact, uh, last year, one of the moons of, uh, I believe it was Saturn, was uh, mm -hmm. etching a groove into the surface of Sat Saturn, and, and all of us saw it, which was kind of wild. So these canals on Mars could have pretend of a, uh, mm -hmm. a past event that uh, mm -hmm. was rather severe. In fact, uh, some of the research from James McKinney would show that uh, Mars may have been a vibrant planet with an atmosphere, but one of these mm -hmm. uh, celestial bodies passed by and just sucked the atmosphere right off of it, along with uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the water. So severe events can happen without collisions, is what mm -hmm. I'm saying here. Yeah, I, I think that uh, all of main, mainstream, uh, mainline science agrees that uh, the planet Mars at one time had a much heavier atmosphere. It was, uh, it had huge oceans. They're gone now, maybe they're below the surface, but some, things some. radically changed there. Yeah. We have the asteroid belt just beyond planet Mars. Well, they call it the asteroid belt. Maybe it's uh, the remains of Mars, you know? Well, there could have <laughs> been remnants of uh, collisions. In other words, when mm -hmm. this uh, object comes through, it, mm -hmm. uh, it is the time when uh, the majority of, cra of the cratering on the moon and the mm -hmm. Earth and all the other uh, the, uh, the planets in our solar system happen. In mm -hmm. other words, there, are, there is a billiard effect that is set up. Although it does not uh, run into anything, it, it passes on by. Mm -hmm. It brings in an entourage of objects, and there's where you get your possibility of impacts with this entourage of asteroids and other objects that brings with us. Too. So <laughs> not a pretty scenario. <laughs> Drags a whole uh, family of things along with it, so to speak, I guess. Right. Uh, just last month, what came through? Neat. Tell us about that. Okay. Well, it was a total media blackout. A large Planet X type object came through our solar system right around the sun. It was as large as Mercury. Like I said, 100% media blackout, unless you're looking at SOHO on the internet or on a few obscure mm -hmm. e-groups like what I have and, and a few other people can have. Can people at home look this up somewhere? Or? Oh, sure. They can find out the details of okay. this. But very shortly thereafter, mm -hmm. uh, uh, NASA and the uh, what I call the disinformation crew started to try <laughs> to play this down because they, they did their best to cover it up. Mm -hmm. The second the uh, surface lifted off of the sun, a massive coronal mass ejection caused by the plasmatic interchange between this passing object mm -hmm. and started going towards this object. The second it hit the object, they shut down SOHO for eight hours, trying to cover up what may happen, because anything could have happened. This thing, like mm -hmm. I said, planet-sized comet could have taken off, and just a piece of it could have disrupted Earth, just mm -hmm. passing by Earth if it, if it would have changed its tra tra trajectory. This, uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this large solar flare could have uh, could have affected us severely, mm -hmm. so that's why they shut it down. They did not want people to know here, and that's their policy. And another thing they're doing like that at, at NASA, from what I understand, is uh, a few years ago they put the downlink video from the space shuttle uh, to all the Earth feeds okay. on a 45 second delay. I guess they'd had too many UFO encounters or strange objects floating around out there in space, and they decided they wanted to have some. Um, Censorship of that, I believe. So yeah, they're they're all about. But, uh, censorship. I think they ought to just uh, let us see what's really going on out there. Well, if you work for any kind of uh, organization like that, you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement saying that mm -hmm. if you are aware of any sort of uh, inbound object or calamitous event that, uh, that could possibly come up, you cannot talk about it, because uh, you know the powers that be really want to uh, control the. Uh, a possible panic and keep uh, the financial markets stable as long as possible. You know, they may be getting ready themselves, mm -hmm. but they know they don't have the resources to help the public, so they're just kind of mm -hmm. letting them go by the wayside. Yeah. <laughs> you know, getting back to the Sumerian uh, stuff, uh, I read a lot of uh, Zachariah Sitchin's material. That's and, an excellent uh, research. Yeah, he, there's, there's not too many more people uh, alive on the planet that can interpret that stuff, I guess. But apparently, 
you know, uh, 3,500, 3,600 years ago, these mm -hmm. people had a very detailed knowledge of the solar system. They knew how many planets we had. They knew how many moons there were around each one of the planets. These people, uh, they were quite advanced. And, and in just 100 years ago here on Earth, we started uh, finding these things out uh, 